members of the committee, I, I never want I never want to start off by taking exception with the characterization of the chair as it relates to the nature of the bill, but this bill is about fireworks. What it's really about Freedom. is underfunded <laughs> is underfunded core services. I want to talk briefly about aid to localities, and I'm going to take Cumberland County from my district, where the aid to locality budget for Cumberland County for fire and rescue is $41,000. With $41,000 there to maintain four fire stations, fire trucks, equipment wherein one Jaws of Life could cost $15,000 by itself, in a world where the cost of one Oshkosh striker fire truck is $700,000. So what this bill does is it creates a local option with a 10% tax from the revenue derived from the sale of these products to the locality specifically earmarked for public safety, for fire and rescue. So while this bill is on its face about fireworks, Mr. Chair, it's really about ensuring that the women and men of rural Virginia have the assets they need to protect not just rural Virginians, but the motoring public who go through those communities. And this is a bill about accountability. In this bill is a licensure requirement for anyone who would engage in this activity. And this is a bill that says that it's okay if dollars from Maryland and North Carolina go to pay for schools in Virginia. Mr. Chairman, there is a friendly amendment that will be moved, I believe, um, by, uh, backed by VDE, VD, Virginia Department of Fire Protection. Um, this only changes the portion of the code wherein we outline that you must be of a certain age to purchase these fireworks. We'd originally placed it in a place in the code where it was awkward and unwieldy, just puts it in the right place. But back to where I was, there's a 10% tax in included in this on top of the sales tax would come back to the Commonwealth for the localities. This addresses shortcomings in our horrific uh, Virginia Constitution's funding formula for local uh, local governments and helps them address woefully underfunded public safety budgets. And then there's a 3% tax on top of that, uh, which would go to the fire marshals to ensure that we are revenue uh, arguably neutral. I think this will generate revenue for the Commonwealth in the form of sales tax. And the point that I attempted to make earlier, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, about tax dollars from Maryland and North Carolina paying for schools and, 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 and infrastructure in the Commonwealth of Virginia is, is this. Because this is a local option and knowing a little bit about the Commonwealth, I know that some localities will choose not to do this, and that's okay. I want these localities to be able to choose not to do this. But if you live in Emporia Greenville on the North Carolina line where a single dollar to, to adequately educate our children is hard to come by, and by the way, money's fungible, so that money that goes to fund that public safety budget can, can replace money then to send back to our schools. But if you live in those areas, the revenue generated by people from North Carolina driving a few miles across the Virginia line to buy fireworks may be the difference between a career and vocational training program in a school that changes a child's life. It may be the difference between, depending upon what the legislative agenda plays out like this year, uh, a, a school lunch or breakfast. This money matters in these communities. So while it might not be right for, say, for example, Arlington, it's world changing on the I-95, I-85, I-81 corridor uh, in Southside Virginia and in rural Virginia. So with that, um, I would submit to any member, questions members of the committees have or what pleases the chair. I do have a number of entities here to speak in favor of the bill, including entities who historically have been opposed to this sort of legislation. Um, and I will say that there may be an entity that speaks uh, in opposition to the bill. Um, I have made accommodations to them to have a delayed enactment of this bill to January of 25, should it pass. Um, and I think, candidly, if the legislative session were longer than 60 days, that we, we would probably be able to get them on board, too. But this is about freedom, economic opportunity. It's about underfunded core essential services. It's about schools. It's about letting those clowns in Maryland and North Carolina pay for our kids' education. Thank you. Thank you. So it sounds like we've got a substitute that uh, needs to be adopted here. So is there a motion properly seconded to adopt the substitute? As many in favor of that motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The substitute is before us. And any questions from members of the subcommittee, Delegate Price? Yes, thank you. Um, just because I'm not as familiar, can you give us some examples of what types of fireworks would be included and what is permissible? I ain't trying to be a smart aleck, the good kind. 
Um, so as you drive through South Carolina or Tennessee or West Virginia or these places and you see fireworks vendors that allow for the sale of display fireworks, the publicly permissible fireworks that are allowed under federal law to be sold to consumers would be allowed in Virginia where the locality chose to allow it. And there would be a license requirement. There would be, again, more tax increases than I've ever supported in any bill I've ever carried I noticed uh, that. in conjunction with this. But, the, but again, for lay people, the good kind of fireworks would be allowed to be sold. Value your price. Yes. The good kind, as you say, does that include ones that make noise and go boom or these like Yes, sparkling? absolutely. Okay, Mr. Chair, follow up. Delegate Price. Um, and what considerations, if any, have there been for those that might be our veterans who serve with PTSD or pets? Because I do know, especially in my locality, they ask us not to use fireworks in our neighborhoods for those reasons to take into consideration the people that find it hard to endure um, July 4th and, and days of those. Days. Sure. So the considerations that would be taken are those that were prescribed by people like Thomas Jefferson when he said the government closest to home governs best. Localities would have the option to allow this or not allow this. I'm a veteran who served. I've spent time in Bosnia. I've spent time in Syria, Iraq, Ukraine. Um, and so I'm very sympathetic to your question. I think it's an excellent question. But I want to power these decisions down to local government. And what we hear from our local government is that the revenue stream that would be created by this would be world changing as it related to opportunities for our children, uh, for our public safety community. So that the, 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 what the consideration is, is communities don't have to do this. And I know that all communities aren't the same. But our local governments and our communities are, are hopeful that we're successful. Any other questions from members of the subcommittee? All right, anybody here in the audience willing, wishing to speak in favor of the bill? And if every, and this, this advice goes for everybody, so if you could all listen in. So if you're going to speak in favor of a bill, well, again, try to be brief. If you're the second or third person in line and the person in front of you has said what you wanted to say, it's okay to say that, that it's already been said and you associate yourself with their comments. Because uh, sometimes being redundant will not enamor you to the people that have to vote on your bill. So with that said, <laughs> go ahead. Mr. Chair, Spencer Willard, I'm with the State Fire Marshal's Office. So we historically for a number of years have opposed any changes in the fireworks code. Um, Delegate Garrett's office did reach out to us and we worked with him on this legislation that is in the substitute that you found. Um, we feel like this is a, a good version of this legislation that we've seen come up every year in the General Assembly, and so we are in support of this uh, legislation, and we hope that it will offer an avenue for our localities to see more funding for their fire protection. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the bill? All right, anyone here in the room wishing to speak in opposition to the bill, please step forward. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Jennifer Pike with the Virginia Professional Firefighters. We appreciate the delegate bringing this bill um, to our attention and bringing it forward. I know his intent is good. However, we um, have historically opposed this bill and we continue to do so. We are concerned about the increase in fire service calls that will be associated with the influx of bringing fireworks that will be readily available to the the people in Virginia. So with this, we oppose this bill. And if you wouldn't mind, the delayed enactment clause doesn't do you, that doesn't make you feel any better about this bill? Not at all. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I am Bonnie Atwood, David Bailey Associates, and today I'm representing the um, Virginia Fire Prevention Association. We oppose the bill, even with the delayed uh, enactment. We need time to talk to all the jurisdictions about the consequences, including even though they can opt out, uh, they may be adjacent to a county that has opted in. So they've got fireworks uh, across the street. It's their problem, too. And uh, I just want to make one brief mention of the PTSD thing. I was a rehabilitation counselor for four years before I was a lobbyist. I have a son with autism. I was president of the Autism Association, and I know the devastating effects of sudden loud noises, not to mention the physical dangers of fireworks. Therefore, we oppose the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Next, come on up. Don't be shy. 
Everybody tries to stay out of everybody else's camera shot. I've discovered you all have learned what the camera angles are. Oh. Never been shy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, Ed Rhodes representing the Virginia Association of Rescue Squads and the Virginia chapter of the International Association of Arson Investigators. We have historically been opposed to this bill, and I concur with what uh, Ms. Atwood and the VPFF have said. There will also be an increase in EMS calls besides fire calls. We oppose the bill. Thank you. All right, and we have one person signed up online. If he, I don't know if he's available or not. We can pull him up. Yes, we've got Mr. Keith Johnson with the uh, Fire Chiefs Association of Loud or Fire Chiefs Association and Loudoun County. Mr. Johnson, Chief Chair, Chief. members of the committee, Keith Johnson, the current Fire Chief in Loudoun County, representing Loudoun County and the Virginia Fire Chiefs Association as past president. Um, I appreciate Delegate Garrett's um, uh, avenue to increase revenue. We have a House bill and Senate bill that is attempting to do that for our fire service. We need funding. However, I don't see funding at the sacrifice of injuries to our citizens as a way to increase our funding. Um, I also am a fire marshal in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I have been involved in many, many firework incidents, uh, both on the professional side and the homeowner side of fireworks. I would argue that I don't see good fireworks. All fireworks in, in my job that increase calls and injuries are dangerous, including sparklers. And I don't want to see another uh, person in the Commonwealth um, injured by fireworks. I've seen enough. And this bill will expand the use of consumer fireworks, which is something that we are against. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Delegate Garrett, you get the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think he just suggested banning sparklers. Um, I oppose that, too. <laughs> I, I just want to say that I think it's interesting when we live in what I would argue is denial. What we can't deny is that our local public safety communities are horrifically underfunded, that our Constitution of Virginia gives funding options to localities that are far too narrow to meet the incredible needs in this post-COVID world. We can't deny that every 4th of July we hear these loud noises across the Commonwealth. We know this. They're here. The difference between those fireworks and these is that the opportunity created by the sale of those products creates a brighter future for young men and women in South Carolina and Tennessee and West Virginia. So it's like trying to close Pandora's box. In fact, this really sort of mirrors the marijuana policy of Alabama. We're acting like we live in a world where the state line stops interstate commerce and it's unrealistic. So what we ought to do is consider that it's nice that they have adequate funding for public safety in Loudoun, but they don't in Cumberland, they don't in Buckingham, they don't in Prince Edward, they don't in Fluvanna, they don't in Goochland, they don't in Emporia and Greenville and Mecklenburg and Charlotte. And I'm trying to create a circumstance where I can serve my constituents like you serve yours. I have worked with everyone. I got the fire safety board on board, but I love my constituents like you love yours. And this isn't about fireworks. This is about opportunity. This is about public safety because we can do better by our citizens when we actually fund our fire and rescue communities. And this is about recognizing that those fireworks are already here. And the only difference, Mr. Chair, is that the revenue is going to other states and not to Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with the committee, we operate by motion. Move to the Second. So Moving probably second the bill report. Any substitute motions? All right, the clerk will put it on the board. Report with the substitute. Yes, report with substitute. And probably refer to appropriations, but I don't think we need to worry about that. We didn't have a letter, so. Clerk will close the roll. The bill fails to report on a vote of two to six. Thank you, Delegate Garrett, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right.